So this talk is entitled, What is the BMHR and Why Do We Need It? The BMHR, or the mini-hip, as some of my patients now call it, is positioned between hip resurfacing and total hip replacement. It's useful for those patients who want a resurfacing, but whose femoral head bone stock is not good enough to have a resurfacing, and they don't want a total hip. It carries the same advantages as hip resurfacing in that the femoral component is easily revisable, if required, to a total hip replacement because the canal of the femur has not been touched. However, unlike hip resurfacing, the BMHR can deal with bone loss in the top part of the femoral head um, or, as I'll show you, can also deal with peculiar anatomy to restore that anatomy much better than a, a hip resurfacing. Now if we take uh, the results of total hip replacement in osteonecrosis or avascular necrosis as it's also called, so dead femoral heads, then the results published for total hip replacement vary markedly as you can see from 0% failure rate to 66.9% failure rate. So there's a huge variation in the published failure rates of total hip replacement. But this is a very nice uh, matched pair study and uh, osteonecrosis is in the blue on the bottom uh, and osteoarthritis patients are on the top. And you can see that uh, at all the time periods out to 12 years, uh, osteonecrosis patients have a worse outcome, a significantly worse outcome than patients with osteoarthritis when treated with a stem total hip replacement. And if you look at the results there, we've got about a 30% failure rate of total hip replacement at 12 years, which is not very good. If we look at my series of hip resurfacing in osteonecrosis or avascular necrosis, um, I'm presenting to you the results of 104 hips in 97 patients and three quarters of them were under the age of 55. So this is the etiology broken down for you in my patients and the biggest group is still idiopathic which means that we don't know what caused the avascular necrosis in those particular patients. When we look at the staging of procedures we don't do resurfacing or total hip replacement in stage 1 or stage 2 and those patients uh, we try and preserve the hip with a joint preserving uh, procedure uh, like a decompression or an osteotomy. But in stage 3 and stage 4 then they're past the stage of conservative procedures and we do a, a hip arthroplasty of some sort. So the group uh, have a mean follow-up of 6.7 years ranging from 3 years to 12.4 years. Here's an example of a 28 year old man with bilateral uh, osteonecrosis on the right side stage 3 and on the left side stage 2 and uh, there we are 5 years 4 months post-operatively we've done a cordy compression on his left side and a Birmingham hip resurfacing on his right side and he's got a perfect outcome. This is a 35 year old man, very unfortunate trauma. Uh, he sustained a, a femoral head fracture in a separate incident of trauma, had that fixed and then sustained a femoral neck fracture and had that fixed also. Uh, but he's got very extensive avascular necrosis and you can see again I've done a Birmingham hip resurfacing and at five years he's fine and he works as a steel erector and is delighted with his hip. Um, this is a 48 year old man with stage 4 osteonecrosis and six years three months after his Birmingham hip resurfacing he has a clinically and radiographically perfect outcome. Another one, 42 year old man with avascular necrosis 10 year, 2 months after a McMinn resurfacing, good outcome.
But the difficulties with avascular necrosis is that first uh, they're prone to further collapse. And I'll show you an example now. This man, uh, the etiology in his hip was alcoholic uh, avascular necrosis. And on the MRI scan on the right, you can see that it appears that the area of dead bone in the femoral head is fairly localized. And I felt that we could get away with a resurfacing. At two months, the x-ray looks great. But unfortunately, two years, ten month x-ray, you can see that the femoral head has collapsed and uh, the femoral component has uh, migrated into varus. So that is the commonest failure pattern uh, when you do a hip resurfacing in the face of avascular necrosis, further collapse of the head. There's also a slightly higher infection rate. Uh, we think that's in a group of patients who've had chemotherapy and have had their uh, immune systems damaged in the past. When you look at the uh, survivorship curve of my resurfacings, then you can see that it all goes wrong between three years and seven years. And there's a stepping down on that survivorship curve and those, that's where a lot of failures are occurring. And uh, at 10 years, I've got a 90% implant survivorship. So 90% of the patients are fine, but a 10% failure rate at 10 years makes me uncomfortable with doing hip resurfacing in avascular necrosis patients. Now, other uh, types of arthroplasty have been tried. Um, this is the Freeman uh, neck preserving stem. And uh, these slides I've got are uh, from Dr. Sugano, who's giving me permission to use them, uh, a colleague from Osaka in Japan. And he's used the Freeman stem with a, a Birmingham hip resurfacing modular head and a BHR cup and uh, he's done a very good job on the uh, femur and in this particular type of total hip replacement most of the femoral neck is retained and you can see on the left there uh, all that retained femoral neck but on the right at six months you can see that that femoral neck unfortunately has largely melted away and he doesn't just have one case. He's got a number of cases like this. And he's also backed these playing radiographs up with DEXA scan studies, which again show that proximally the bone is melting away. So in this particular type of arthroplasty, yes, we've managed to be conservative in that we retain the uh, femoral neck. But because the implant is jammed into the femur and loads onto the cortex of the shaft of the femur, you get proximal stress shielding and the proximal bone in the femoral neck tends to melt away. So as I've shown you, if the femoral neck is not loaded, it tends to melt away. And the question then is, can we get over that? Level A is the resection level typical of a total hip replacement. Level B is the level of resection in, for example, that Freeman stem that I just showed you from Dr. Sagano. But there's no point in retaining the femoral neck if you don't load the femoral neck. If you don't load it, it melts away. I want to introduce you to level C, which is a very unusual uh, level of resection and that's the uh, level of resection for this mid-head resection prosthesis and level D is the resection level for a Birmingham hip resurfacing. Now I want you to look on the lateral film I've split this cadaveric femur into four and if you look on the right on the lateral film 